You're reading the Cosmere wrong. I... <sighs> the single most contentious thing I've ever said on this channel, the one statement that is virtually guaranteed to get a chorus of um, actuallys in the comments, is that I believe Mistborn Secret History should be read after Bands of Mourning, as Sanderson intended. However, I concede that there are valid points for placing it immediately after Era 1. So, in an effort to appease both sides of the internet, here's the secret history order so you all get off my back about it. Before we get there, quick thank you to my patrons for making this video possible. Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Mithi Corone, Gallant Aegis, and the Son of James. Check out my Patreon if you like my videos and want cool perks. The Shosya Gombai actually aligns a little more closely with the original Decroix Watrafo Tank at Miswa than my updated Rafu. Moving the single domino of secret history earlier lets the rest of the books fall much more nicely. If you want to stay on the same planet until the stories are done, rather than jumping around more holistically, this order is for you. Like both previous orders, here you'll start off with Elantris. Note, this is not what I would recommend if you want to see if Sanderson is right for you. If you haven't read any of the Cosmere yet, I, and Brandon actually, suggest starting with any of these. I'll talk about why they're each good jumping off points as I get to them. Elantris was Sanderson's first published book, and of his own admission, his weakest. Still solid, but it'll only get better from here, writing style-wise. Hope of Elantris is a little sequel slash flashback short story contained in Arcanum Unbounded. Not required reading in terms of plot or general Cosmere awareness, but a fun tidbit nonetheless. Staying on Cell, the planet where Elantris takes place, but moving sort of northwest across a sea and a mountain range, we have the Emperor's Soul. This one is an excellent starting place if you just want a taste of Sanderson. It's a shorter, self-contained novella, so it's a really fast read, the writing is exemplary of Sanderson's usual style, the characters and story are engaging, and it showcases a lot of the underlying philosophy of Sanderson's work. Absolutely one of my favorites. Hopping Worlds, we move to the only graphic novel on the list, though we will be getting an updated prose version soon, with White Sand. The updated Omnibus Edition from Dynamite Comics is great. Back in Arcanum Unbounded, but again on a different world, read Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell. Another short one, originally written at the prompting of George R.R. R. Martin. Then we finally get to Mistborn, starting with The Final Empire. This is my typical recommendation for people wanting to give Sanderson a try. I love the magic system, the characters are relatable, the story is engaging, and the completion of the first trilogy is one of the most beautiful endings I have ever read. Final Empire, then The Well of Ascension, jump back for a little prequel with the 11th medal, then finish it up with Hero of Ages. At this point, we get the linchpin of this entire reading order, Mistborn Secret History. A sort of behind-the-scenes look at what was going on during the first trilogy, it has significant reveals for literally the rest of the Cosmere. I like it where it was originally published after Bands of Mourning, but having Era 1 fresh in your brain does make it a bit easier to place certain events. With that out of the way, we can move right on to Mistborn Era 2 with the Alloy of Law. I suggest fitting in the short story Alamancer Jack and the Pits of Altania at this point, but you could also save it for any time between Wax and Wayne you need a little pick-me-up. Shadows of Self, Bands of Mourning, then right on to Lost Metal. Because of this order, there will be lots of things mentioned in Lost Metal that you won't recognize. It shouldn't detract from the story too much, it'll make sense when you see them again. Next we have our first secret project, my favorite of the three, and also an excellent book to start your Sanderson journey with. Trust of the Emerald Sea takes place farther in the future of the Cosmere, but is fairly self-contained. There are hints and references to the wider goings-on, though to me, they only serve to show that there is more out there, without really punishing you for not reading everything beforehand. It's absolutely delightful, I love this book. After that, we jump back to Arcanum Unbounded with Sixth of the Dusk. This novella is being expanded into Secret Project 5. When that happens, you don't need to read it here, just read Isles of the Emberdark after everything else. 
It's far future, but the story in Arcanum Unbounded isn't really spoilery for anything, though it lets you understand some references in Stormlight a little clearer. The novel is not that. But until its release, read about magic birds here. Final required reading before Stormlight, and also an excellent starting point, particularly because it's available for free on Brandon's website, is Warbreaker. If you want to try Sanderson without any financial or librarial investment whatsoever, I've got a direct link in the description. This one's the most mystery novel e of the Cosmere books, and it's very much a roller coaster of a story. Also has huge connections to what comes next, the Stormlight Archive! <laughs> This is Sanderson's magnum opus. We're getting the final of the first five book arc this December, and if you want to start your Cosmere journey with Way of Kings, more power to you. It's big, it's dense, it's epic in every sense of the word. Words of Radiance is bigger, and in many people's opinion, better. Edge Dancer is a novella found in Arcanum Unbounded that takes place between Words of Radiance and Oathbringer. It explores one specific character's journey in that time frame. Then Oathbringer, with another novella, Dawn Shard, after that, which will explain some things that show up in Rhythm of War. My understanding is that Brandon intends the Stormlight-adjacent secret project, The Sunlit Man, to be read between Rhythm of War and Wind and Truth. That will then take you to Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, another standalone that would work as an entry point for those of you really into anime. And then it'll just be Wind and Truth and Isles of the Emberdark when they come out, plus whatever other book Brandon accidentally writes. So where do you think secret history should go? Like, subscribe, let me know in the comments, or come talk about it on my Discord, and I'll read and find out. Also, I got a store up. Link.